Hey friend, what you're about to watch is a 60 minute live stream I did in the past with designer Dashan Gajara. And in this live stream, we talk all about building a design career through side projects. In this live stream, Dashan and I talk about why we even have side projects, the benefits of having side projects, how to choose different side projects to focus on, how to balance your side projects along with your full-time job and more. We also talk about some of the practical sides of running side projects like monetization, collaborating, hiring help. So if that's interesting to you, then stay tuned for the stream ahead. If you want to be notified of when I do live streams like this in the future, I always do them over on Super Bear. So you can go to the link in the description below, subscribe over there, and you'll be notified of when I next go live. Enjoy the stream. All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another live stream. I'm super excited to be here with my friend Dashan and we're gonna talk all about how to build your design career through side projects, which I think is gonna be a very, very fun topic for both of us to talk about. Um, while we're kind of waiting for people to join, feel free to pop in the chat where you're joining from. I already see some of you saying you're from London, New York, Dubai, Bay Area. Uh, and maybe you can also tell us what is your side project. If you're currently working on a side project, feel free to pop it in the chat. I welcome links. Uh, feel free to share what you're working on. I want to see all the cool things you're doing. Uh, and if you're not working on a side project yet, maybe you can share the idea you have. Maybe you're thinking about starting a side project or there's something that's inspiring to you and you're thinking about turning into a side project. So let us know in the chat as well. Uh, if you're thinking about a side project, what that side project might be. Uh, so cool to see where all of you are coming from. Germany, Brazil, Stockholm. A lot of you are tuning in from India, which is awesome too. Welcome, welcome. I love this like global community that we have of designers. It's always cool to see where everybody is from. Um, Dashan, I would love to give the mic to you to tell us a little bit more about you, yourself, uh, maybe some of your side projects as well. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, perfect. And first of all, uh, thanks a lot, FMK, for having me on the stream today. And uh, also, to uh, hello to all the people who have joined on the stream. I think we have about uh, 80 people now. And uh, yeah, so about me, my name is Darshan. I'm a product designer and a maker based in Berlin. I currently lead design at Graph CMS, which is a GraphQL native headless CMS uh, that brands and independent creators use to host and deliver their content at scale. I also run a side project called as Product Disrupt, which is a curated list of resources uh, that people can refer to to learn design from the internet and absolutely for free. So it has a curation of resources like uh, podcasts, blogs, newsletters, makers, designers, YouTube channels, UI kits, whatever you would need to learn design. And it also applies to people who are starting in their career and also who want to continuously improve because it's a continuous process. Uh, and apart, and uh, before moving to Berlin, I was based in India, uh, Mumbai. I have about seven years of experience uh, working with product companies and uh, agencies. So I've worked on-site, uh, remote, uh, and uh, in the past three years, I was working as a consultant. So during that time, I also got the opportunity to work with uh, clients from the countries like the UK, US, UAE, Canada, wow. and of course, India. So that, that was a great time. Uh, that's pretty much about me. Cool. Wow. I didn't realize you'd work with clients all over the world. That's amazing. Well, I'm so excited to have you here on the stream and I popped uh, some links to you on the internet in the chat. So feel free to go and check that out, especially Product Disrupt. What an amazing free resource for the design community. I think it's incredible. So thank you so much for curating that. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping before we get into our discussion. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the stream, feel free to pop them in the chat. Uh, I'm going to be collecting them and saving them throughout the stream and we'll kind of save the last 10 to 15 minutes uh, to go through some of your questions. So pop them in. I'm not ignoring them. We're just saving them for the end. 
Uh, and then just a reminder, we love it when you share uh, the stream as well. If you're finding this helpful, if you're having a good time, uh, feel free to share this on Twitter and Instagram and you can tag us too. It's always fun after the stream to go and see uh, what people have been saying online about it. So we appreciate that. And let's get into the discussion around side projects and how this can benefit you and your career. Um, Nishan, maybe you can start a little bit by telling us, I, I know you've mentioned already the product disrupt side project that you have. Um, can you tell us a little bit about why you started that, what that means to you, uh, and maybe any other side projects that you've worked on as well? Yeah, sure. So I'd like to take you back in time. Cool, so let's do I, it. <laughs> yeah, I, I come from an engineering background and I never, never really went to a design school or uh, studied design professionally. Uh, so I used, to, I used to continuously refer to a lot of people on the internet and there are, and there are a lot of kind people who share their uh, work, they make good case studies, they share their uh, process in the articles, uh, podcast, newsletter. There are so many of these things I was, and I was continuously referring to them. And also one of the reasons why I did not want to study it from a school was that I knew that this kind of education wouldn't be possible from any school in India. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to learn from the best of the best. So which is why I was always online trying to look at all these resources. And obviously uh, through deliberate practice, I was trying to teach myself design. Now what happened was uh, after engineering, I got a job uh, at this company called Book My Show as a designer. And uh, a lot of my friends, they were all from engineering background and design was not really a thing back then in India. We are, so we are talking about, we are talking, uh, the year is 2015. Okay. So a lot of my friends, they continuously kept on asking me that, what is it that you do as a designer and how does your day job look like? And I always used to have this problem of explaining the same thing to them like over and over again. Uh -huh. And a lot of people, they also told, they were asking me that, how did you learn it? And what are the resources that you're following? So it was just one question that kept on repeating and I, I saw it as an opportunity. So what I, what I did was, I just put together a quick website. I uh, got a framework. So coming from an engineering background, I could do uh, some sort of coding. I'm not really a professional coder, but I can still uh, do some coding for my personal projects. Awesome. So I, so I just got a framework and I thought that I already have all of these resources because I already listed it down somewhere in the, uh, somewhere in my notes. Now, how about I just take all those resources and organize it and make it into a website. So when I did that, fortunately it got a, fortunately and surprisingly, it got a very good response. A friend of mine helped me to launch it on product hunt. Oh, and, awesome. Yeah. And when we launched it on product hunt, it actually became the number one product of the day. Wow. And the response that we got, uh, that I got from there was incredible. And also it's a community that is also going to give you a lot of feedback if they are interested into something. Yeah. So in a lot of those comments, people also started uh, suggesting that maybe there were, if there was a resource or a newsletter where I could send them a uh, fresh curation, they would be happy to subscribe to that. So I also thought that, yeah, I can just start a newsletter and, uh, I did not know what newsletters were and how to actually write one, but I just uh, Googled and I found MailChimp and it was very easy to set up a newsletter. So I started with that and you would see that the central theme that I have around working on all the side projects is because I want to learn a particular skill or a tool. Mm -hmm. And that's why I started a side project and the newsletter was mostly because I wanted to just learn the skill of writing newsletters. Yeah. That's awesome. That's yeah, yeah that's how the journey has been so far. That's so great. I love how you saw like a, a gap or an opportunity, right? Like people were asking you, you know, these questions all the time and you saw that as an opportunity to create some sort of resource and provide that back to the community, which is really awesome. And that's often like what I encourage when I talk to people who want to start side projects, I tell them like, well, are there any gaps in your in your industry or in your community or like what opportunities do you think there are and like maybe that's a sign for you to step in and create something and, and contribute in that space um i feel like when i started my side projects it was a little bit more 
um, selfish in that, like, this was back in 2015 as well, ironically, uh, when I wanted to start freelancing and getting more like UX, UI product design experience, because up until that point, I'd been doing more like marketing web design. And I was like, I'm really interested in product UX. Like I, I need to figure out how to get that kind of work on my portfolio. And so I started blogging, uh, thinking that like that would help attract clients to sort of then like, you know, engage with me as a freelancer. And that's kind of my very first side project I had back then was I was blogging, I was writing these blogs and then eventually evolved into a newsletter. And then the newsletter eventually evolved into a podcast, which eventually now I'm doing a YouTube channel. And, you know, all these years later, it's kind of like evolved over time. Um, but I think what's really cool, and you kind of mentioned this as well, is like you start with something and it, it grows, right? It can grow into something else and you see other opportunities. Like you wanted to practice your writing skills. So starting a newsletter, I was kind of the same with my YouTube is I was really interested in doing video and like teaching design in a more visual format and wanted to learn more how to do that. And so I started YouTube. Um, so I think it's a good reminder that side projects can evolve over time as well. Mm -hmm. And I also like that uh, very early in your career, how did you know that starting a blog might attract some clients? Like were there any particular designers that you were following who were getting clients through mm. by doing this? Yeah. Um, one of my inspirations back then, and he is still an inspiration to me, is Paul Jarvis. Uh, I'm not oh. sure if you're familiar with Paul. Um, I'm, I, would, I, would, I would say that I'm a very big fan of his work. I read, yeah. I've read almost all his articles, and I'm very sad that he doesn't write his newsletter anymore. I know. I'm also very sad. I'm going to um, put a link in the chat to his Twitter account, but he was writing this amazing newsletter, as you know, uh, called the Sunday Dispatches um, and was like regularly writing about his experience as a freelancer and like working with clients and things like that. And so that kind of inspired me to do the same. And I thought, well, maybe if I write about this topic, it will attract clients that you know might be interested in working with me um so that was kind of how that started and it did lead to some client work i did get a few projects and a few uh clients out of writing and, and publishing that online um which was great I, like it, it seems to work for me at the time so yeah paul was a really big inspiration for me back then great um, it, it seems like we have a lot of similarities we yeah started with all of the same people yeah, totally. Um, I'm curious, like, what have been some of the benefits for you in doing a side project? It's a, it's a long list of benefits that I've had. So number one, uh, it, has, it has taught me a lot of things. As I mentioned earlier, that the reason why I work on side projects is because I wanted to learn a skill or a tool. And if, even if the side project doesn't go anywhere, I'm already winning because I know that I'm learning something. Yeah. So that's the number one benefit. And I think the second benefit is also that it allows me to build an audience and create this personal brand, mm -hmm. which, which helped me a lot when I was working as a consultant. So a lot of people found me through Product Disturb there. And it's not just they were just going to look at one project and they're going to know oh, this is a guy that I want to hire and they're going to start working with you. It doesn't work that way, but obviously it adds up. So when people they, people start discovering you uh, through a particular resource and then they start looking into your different profiles. So I used to be, I mean, I'm always very active in communities and I try to give back to the community. So people then see my different profiles and they reach out uh, with projects, uh, with full-time opportunities as well. So uh, ironically, I also had an offer from Uber uh, India. Oh, funny. Yeah. Awesome. And that was, that was also because uh, they, one of the recruiters, they saw that I had this product, uh, product disrupt. Right. So I've got a lot of uh, incoming requests like this to work on uh, full time, uh, to work as a full time, on a full time job and on uh, freelance projects. And then I've also got opportunities to talk at a lot of different conferences. So I've talked to, talked uh, at a lot of different places in India. And I was also invited to give a, a session on design thinking in Doha in Qatar. Wow. And, uh, cool. 
it was a great experience because it was an international talk so they flew me over there all expenses covered they also compensated me and it was a good compensation uh i did not enjoy talking to the corporate people that's a different thing but it was a great experience and then i will also get the opportunities to talk to uh, could talk to uh, inspiring people online uh like like right now i'm getting to talk to you yeah so i think there are numerous benefits to working on a side project and also the another thing is that uh, because my side project is related to design and i professionally also work as a designer mm-hmm. the great thing is that i am constantly on a lookout for uh, resources so i'm constantly keeping myself up to date with the industry i'm constantly learning and obviously i can take those learnings and apply to my uh, full time job as well and through writing this newsletter uh, through getting sponsorships i've learned a bit of sales i continuously practice writing i'm con- continuously looking at all these resources so they are all yeah. uh, benefits to me i mean i cannot see a single drawback yeah i love that i think it's like for anyone who's kind of struggling with like oh what should my side project be like i don't have any ideas just take a look at what are you doing already and like how can you turn that into something that other people might benefit from right it's kind of like teaching what you know um so like for me i was um i think my podcast is a good example of this actually uh which is called design life and i do it with a friend charlie and we just talk about like our careers our growth our journey in design and like we're not coming on to that podcast as like experts and like this is how it should be done and like here is all our track record experience that like verifies us as like authorities in this domain um but it's really kind of documenting our journey and i think what's cool about that is like sharing as we go and teaching what we know and i think it's important because you don't have to be an expert in something to teach like you just have to know something that someone else doesn't know um and so that's always a good reminder for me when sometimes like you know things like imposter syndrome come up and i'm like maybe i'm like how am i qualified to talk about this i'm not like the best product designer in the world right like there's surely people better than me at this um but i always try to remind myself that you know i have something that I can teach and I can share from my own experience and somebody else might learn from that and kind of look at the things I'm already doing and how can I how can I help someone else who might also be trying to do the same thing um so that's been really helpful for me Yeah and I totally res- resonate with that also the thing that you mentioned that uh when you are sharing something that you have learned uh the people who are just one or two level below you they're yeah. going to learn quite a lot from you than they would be learning from an industry expert totally and i and i absolutely resonate with this idea of uh you just try to share what you learn uh, just try to share your journey you don't have to pretend to be an expert and and let's be honest when somebody pretends to be an expert nobody likes that so yeah, exactly. it's just sharing <laughs> the journey and I, and i and i like what gary vaynerchuk also preaches that it's about documenting what you do mm-hmm. and uh, that's also how you're going to build an audience you don't have to be an expert yeah totally yeah and i love that you bring up like building an audience as well because that for me has probably been um one of the you know main benefits or things that keeps me energized and keeps me excited about my side projects is this community that i get to engage with and i get to have conversations with all of the 130 odd people showing up to this live stream like i'm so grateful for every single one of you that i can connect with and and help and touch and like have a little you know like influence on your journey in design um so i love that part of it being able to give back to the community being able to connect and build that audience uh and engage with with people is really important um to me i think some other benefits are like those learning opportunities i think you touched on that as well uh like if you want to try getting into motion graphics or something i don't know is there a way that you could do that in public and have a side project around it and like show others your progress and how you're learning and and bring people along with you on that journey along the way um i think there's always really good learning opportunities within side projects as well absolutely i'm curious about in relation to 
your career. I think you touched on this a little bit already that you've gotten some like job opportunities, people noticed you. Um, has there been any positive effect of doing side projects as it relates to your career as a designer? I, I did not uh, get that. So uh, could you repeat the last part? Yeah, so I'm curious how your side projects have benefited you in your career. Um, like you talked about, you've had some like recruiters reach out to you for jobs because yeah. they noticed your side projects, for example. Um, are there any other benefits you've had as it relates to side projects and your career as yeah. a designer? So I can give you this one very specific example. Uh, so there was this client who uh, once uh, saw product disrupt and reached out to me on LinkedIn. Uh, the it, it's a company which makes software for restaurants and they are headquartered in UAE, but they have their business in uh, different parts of Middle East. Mm -hmm. uh, the the I uh, I ended up working with them uh, for about two years as a consultant, and by far it has been one of the greatest experience that I ever had with working a, a working with a client. Uh, they really appreciated and respected design, and working with them was such a smooth experience. And obviously they compensated me quite well. I was able to uh, travel to Dubai two times. I've traveled Amazing. to Kochi two times because I also had an office over there. And uh, the kind of, just the kind of projects that I was working on when I was working with them. Uh, so I made this application uh, called Kitchen Display System, which restaurants used in their kitchen uh, to fulfill the orders. So mm. imagine that when you walk into a restaurant, a uh, waiter would take the order on a tablet. The, or the order automatically shows inside the kitchen and the uh, chef uh, or the other people working inside the kitchen, they would be able to see that, prepare it and fulfill it. Cool. So uh, I was able to, I was able to uh, work on that project. I helped them design it. And before we started this project, I also did a user research trip. So I went to Dubai. I talked to about 15 restaurants, uh, talked to people who work inside the restaurants, all different kind of restaurants. It also it, it was also a nice trip because then I also got to see a lot of different parts of Dubai. That's awesome. And and, and then the experience of getting to learn from them that what exactly their struggles are because to be very honest when we sit in a nice and comfortable chair in an air-conditioned office we can't really know how things work inside a kitchen yeah so and true <laughs> if you talk to anyone who works inside a kitchen you would know that kitchen is a very stressful environment people there they are very aggressive and obviously because they have so many things going on they have to constantly fulfill the orders on time they don't have they don't have much time on their hand right yeah and also, these people they are not they are not sitting in front of a desk, so they don't uh, they don't uh, see the screen the way that you are used to seeing it. And also, they might have greasy hands because they are cooking food. Right. So there are so many things that went into consideration while preparing that uh, while designing that application, and it was only possible because I was able to talk to them. So, anyways, the whole experience of talking to their users working on two incredible products with them which have done great for them they've also expanded their business in india and yeah. they've also done great throughout the time of pandemic uh this has been one of the greatest experiences that i had and it was all made possible because of my side project product disrupt yeah that's so awesome um i love that that's opened you up to those kinds of opportunities uh i got my job at uber because of my side project um so someone from uber had subscribed to my newsletter and eventually like i guess showed it to their design manager and then the design manager subscribed to my newsletter and then one day he replied to one of my newsletters being like hey are you interested in working at Uber? We have some open roles, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, whoa, someone from Uber is like replying to my newsletter. I didn't even know that like real designers subscribed to this. Um, so it was like a very cool moment. Um, and one thing led to another. And then that's basically how I started working at Uber. So for me, I like, I can directly credit my job uh, that I have at the moment back to my email newsletter and working on side projects and like building and iterating in public um, and now like four years later i have you know more than just an email newsletter and i definitely have noticed like people take notice and i do get pretty occasional recruiting emails from from folks who are interested in 
whether I want to join their team. Um, and I think there is also what I'm starting to see more and more now, which I think is amazing, is companies who really um, value designers who give back to the community and who like work in public and have these side projects. Um, at the end of the day, it benefits the company as well. So it's kind of in the company's best interest um, to like encourage and to foster that. So I think there are so many opportunities with side projects um, and I'm very grateful that it's led to employment opportunities. So that's been really great for me. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's a, it's a win-win. Uh, for a lot of companies, uh, when you're working with them and you're sharing some of your processes, and if the company is fine with you uh, trying to share a lot of that work in the open, it's obviously going to reach a wider audience. And uh, there are also going to be customers who might end up using your product. So in a way, you're also doing the marketing work for them. So Yeah, exactly. And, um, and, and also, one thing that I would just like to mention is that, you know, uh, if, if you do not work on these things, you might actually not know what, what you're missing on because the kind of opportunities that sh uh, knock on your doors when you start sharing your work online is just something that you would never know if you never did that. Yeah, that's a really, really good point. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how to choose a side project. Uh, I have spoken to a lot of people who they understand the benefit of side projects. They want to get into doing side projects. Um, maybe they have a lot of ideas and they don't know where to start, or maybe they don't have any ideas and they're trying to, you know, think of something that they could do as a side project. Um, what advice would you have for these people? People who want to start with side projects, but maybe aren't sure how to get started. Yeah. So uh, I would say that you can first start with yourself. And this is also something that we touched upon uh, in the beginning of our conversation. So just try to see, do you have a problem? Uh, because I mean, the kind of work that you are doing, are you facing some challenges? And is there a problem that you would like to solve? Just do it for yourself. And the best part about it is, even if the side project is not beneficial for others, it's going to be beneficial for you. So you at least solve the problem of that one person <laughs> and yeah. you're going to make yourself happy. So and that it's it's a great way to start something. And you you would have also seen that a lot of people who work on side projects or have their companies they started working on something because they wanted to sell, solve their own problem or to scratch their own itch. Uh, and and all, okay, so if, if you tell me that you don't really have any particular problems, but you still want to work on a side project, then I would say that see if your friends have a problem mm. now. Uh, you can you can always start from the smaller circles. You don't have to look in uh, look in the obese and you know just try to yeah. Uh, it's a good reminder. With, yeah, just try to come up with random ideas. You can just ask around, right? So one example I can give you is that if I come from an engineering background, I'm a designer. My engineering friends might be struggling with design. Now there could be a lot of pro they might be interested in working on their own projects. Maybe they're indie hackers, and uh, they when they're working on a product they struggle with design. Is there something that you can do to help with them? It's just one example, but you can always ask around. Obviously it doesn't have to be people in the tech. You can also make something for people who are outside tech. Yeah. We all have friends, we can always ask them. And if, if that's also not the case, uh, if you're not finding inspiration from there, then the other, uh, then try, start asking if, you're, if the friends of friends have a problem. <laughs> Just try to keep on extending the network. And then this is where the online communities come into picture. Now, a, good, a great way to find inspiration for side projects would be to, you know, just uh, become a part of these communities where there are people who are sharing their thoughts or experiences or uh, their processes. And number one community that I would recommend people to join would be Indie Hackers, IndieHackers.com. Uh, the community is, is just incredible. It's very supportive. And uh, people there, they are all makers, right? They're always trying to uh, look after one another. You would all obviously, you can also find uh, uh, your a partner to work on a side project from there. So you can become a part of those communities where you can actually source these ideas from. And then uh, before joining Indie Hackers, uh, I was also part of a lot of Facebook groups. And there are niche groups for almost everything. There, uh, our friend Paul Jarvis, Paul Jarvis. Uh, <laughs> is a big rat person 
and in some of his articles he used to share that there are a lot of communities for rats as well now that can be a niche for literally anything if you have yeah. a particular interest just try to find a group for that and i'm sure you would definitely find a facebook group or if not that you would at least find a reddit channel or a subreddit about it we are internet is a weird place you can find weird stuff everywhere <laughs> and just try to find your weird people and if once you become a part of this communities you would you would see that uh, there could be a lot of problems that the, those communities might be facing and then you can just see that are there any skills that you have that you can leverage to solve that problem and that that's it you have a, your side project idea and yeah and just try to start from within and keep on extending don't always look in the obvious and just try to come up with random stuff yeah i think that was that was such a great response uh i agree with everything you said i think like something else i try to remind folks is that a side project doesn't have to be like this commitment to do forever uh you could yep. time box a side project it could just be a one off thing that you do and then you move on to something else or maybe it is a recurring thing like my youtube channel for example that's something that i'm doing recurring it's an ongoing project um but side projects can take so many different forms and shapes it doesn't always have to be this like big thing uh or like an ongoing thing it could just be a small one off time boxed project that you do um so yeah i think that can sometimes help lower the barrier a little bit as well to getting started into side projects which is another topic i want to talk about in terms of like let's say you have an idea you know what you want to do and then now it's time to like get started and take action and and start on your side project um i'm curious what this has been like for you uh for me i used to get really like uh I guess I wanted to really plan out my side projects a lot in advance before sort of launching it or announcing it to the public and you know kind of doing a lot of behind the scenes preparation um and I found that that would often hold me back because I would be like afraid of launching it eventually and like kind of putting it off and and be really nervous uh about eventually releasing my side project and recently I've switched a little bit to more like building in public and having that public yeah. accountability and like lowering the barrier a little bit like it doesn't have to be this like big huge thing that you come out with uh you can just release little things along the way or work on it in public or just get started on one small thing like breaking down a huge project into smaller more like actionable attainable goals um like if you just had a side project of i'm going to launch a podcast like that's a big goal like how do you get started with that there's so many things you need to do to do that right um so yeah. breaking it down into those small little tasks has been really helpful for me in the past combined with like doing it in public and like talking about it and being open about it um cuz you might get people to come and help you along the way too yeah and i mean all the points that you have mentioned i completely resonate with that and that's also the kind of uh, approach that i try to take towards my side projects and i can also share that so side projects for me they are actually a way uh, to express creativity i think of them as an outlet of express outlet of creativity yeah and i don't think that all the side projects have to be very serious it can just be something casual uh and and one of the most important thing that uh, people need to remember while working on a side project is that it 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 should feel like play to you it should not feel like work if it's work then it's just a, it's just work right it's not really a side project then you're not really doing it because of your uh, because some passion that you have so and and uh, when i approach a side project with this mindset it lowers a lot of burden uh, from me i don't i don't have all those responsibilities uh, while starting that project so i i already know that i'm just going to be working on something which is going to make me happy so it it definitely helps and what i also try to do is i know that a designer me designer in me always wants uh, things to be perfect yeah uh, <laughs> but when we work on products it's never about perfection i always uh, suggest people that uh, uh, share often share early and also launch uh, launch your side project before it's ready because only mm. when you're going to launch it only then you're going to get feedback right if you share your project with other people 
other people, as you mentioned, building in public, it's going to open so many doors for you. People are going to respond. They're going to give you feedback. And once you have that feedback loop going, uh, you know that there's some traction. Like it's not yeah. just you constantly breaking your head about a particular topic. You also know that there are other people. There's a conversation going. Maybe it's also going to build public accountability. And that's how you, I try to use public accountability to great advantage. Yeah. Whenever I want to work on something, I would just go and, I'm just going to go on Twitter and uh, <laughs> tell people that I'm yes. working on it. And yeah, I actually saw you did this for a book that you're planning to write. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And also, it, it's very difficult. I am I'm struggling to find time to write that book. But just because I've shared it online, and there are people who are, who are already waiting and they... Uh, and they, they send me a DM, they push me, they ask me to, you know, uh, when the book is going to be available. So it's going to, it's going to keep me accountable. Now I know that there are other people who also want this. So it's a great validation. And I think when you are getting, when you're building this momentum, it's also about building momentum, right? Uh, you, you might lose uh, interest because we all know that when we start something, we are interested, uh, we, we, we think that it's the best thing in the world, you're going to enjoy working on it. And you just absolutely love uh, the process when you start something, but then yeah. slowly the motivation drains. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then it's, it's so difficult to work on something. So I think when you build momentum, when there's all of these small things, just the small things, it's ultimately going to add up. Uh, getting feedback from people, having people knocking on your doors to use that product, sharing the uh, experience that you're having while building it with other people, seeing mm -hmm. people resonate with that. All of the small things are going to add up to you ultimately launching that side project. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic advice. Uh, I would also say for me, sometimes collaborating with someone else is also really helpful. Um, yeah. Not only do you like share the, the workload, but also you have that accountability and you have like someone to bounce ideas off and, Together, you, you create something that you couldn't have done on your own. And I've loved collaborating with Charlie, my co-host for the Design Life podcast. Um, it's been super fun to like go through this with somebody else. And we're both like figuring it out as we go. We're definitely not perfect, have for sure made mistakes. Um, but, you know, we show up every week to record. And if it weren't for her, I don't know if I would still be recording a podcast five years later, like... I think it's very different when you do something on your own to like have that motivation and accountability to continue showing up is, is more difficult and more challenging. Um, have, have you collaborated with anyone on any of your side projects or have they all been sort of a solo, solo project? Okay. So Charlie, uh, Femke, I'm going to use uh, your live stream to announce something. Okay. Go for it. I'm actually working on a uh, another side project, and this is actually with a collaborator, with a partner. So oh. the product is a no, is going to be a Notion resource that people can use to find a job uh, abroad and move abroad with a job. Awesome. And the reason why the reason why I'm doing this is because I moved to Berlin from Mumbai, and it it was a long journey. It took me th almost uh, three years that I had to wow. go through a lot of uh, interviews. There were so many different struggles. I also had problems with visa. And what happened was during these three years of journey, I learned so many things about how you can find a job abroad. And in the past, I've also had people asking me this question on a repetitive basis. And it's again the same thing. I'm identifying these problems because people are asking me about it. And uh, uh, I've also uh, helped a few people uh, find a job abroad. So recently I helped someone to uh, move to Berlin uh, from uh, Mumbai. So this is something that I'm also passionate about and it's a problem that I've faced. And I, I think a lot of other people are also facing the same thing. And yeah. so uh, there's the partner of mine. He, uh, his name is Beto. He runs a side project called as Duo Flag. Uh, it's, a, it's a newsletter which curates jobs with visa sponsorship. And, oh. and this guy, he also moved from Brazil to Australia. He also has tons of experience in moving abroad with a job. So I, we, and we were actually talking on a very different topic. Uh, we had actually gotten on a call to discuss a, a different product idea, but then this just came up and uh, we just hit it really well. We both knew that we had the same problem. We both were very interested in working on this. So we have started working on this product now. And I can already tell you that 
I started working on a book uh, to crack a product design interview. I think four or five months ago, mm-hmm, and the mm-hmm. book has gone. The book has gone nowhere because it's just me <laughs> working on it on I, your I, own, I, doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I am. I'm dabbling with so many things. I constantly struggle to find time to work on something. So yeah. that's 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 just been there. I've not made much progress with it. Not just because I have another person working on this resource to move abroad. We have actually got the ball rolling. We have a we have put we have started uh, tracking all our tasks in Notion. We are amazing. Uh, this week we are also looking planning to set up a landing page. So we things are already in motion, and I think it's because of the push that I have from this other guy. Yeah. So collaboration wa- works uh, brilliantly. Totally, collaboration is a great like motivator, right? When you're working with somebody else, you don't want to let them down. Um, yeah. Thank you for announcing that that you're working on that. That's so exciting. Is there is there a website or somewhere people can go now to kind of see more about it or it's still in progress? Yeah, so we don't have the landing page yet. I think okay. the landing page is going to be out in uh, in a week's time. Uh, okay. I, w- I think I'm just going to use a con- convert kit to uh, create that landing page. Cool. But uh, for people who want to follow uh or get updates on this you can obviously follow me on twitter i share a lot of share all the things on twitter i always build in public and you can also sign up to my personal newsletter and you would uh, i would definitely be sharing all these things uh behind the scenes and process in the personal great. newsletter as well that's so great i'm so excited to see um let's move into one more topic before we get into q a which is the topic of how to balance side projects um you know you and i both work full time we have side projects as well which take up a lot of our time uh and you know i hear a lot from people who want to get into side projects that they're worried about how to balance it or maybe they're still studying at school and they're trying to balance schoolwork and and doing side projects as well um how has this been for you how do you balance it uh, do you have any advice or maybe lessons learned yeah i would say it ultimately boils down to what really matters to you it's our priorities now we we all have limited time in a day it's not that femk is going to have 26 hours and <laughs> have 20 hours we are all going to have the same time so if if femk is able to work on so many products why can't i i can also do that right what what does this tell me about you that femk prioritizes working on these things then you know maybe watching uh, uh, binge watching netflix or or doing some other random stuff i don't know what uh, but it just tells me that you are prioritizing these things right so it's just about if you are really into something if you are really passionate about something i think you are going to be able to find time you just try to try to cut down on the things that are not helping you go anywhere and uh, try to see that you, if you can uh, use that time to work on your side project obviously mm-hmm. uh, you most of the in in most cases you are only going to find that extra time during the weekends or uh, maybe one or two hours after work but you you know that you are going to have very limited uh, slots like that so if it really matters to you i think you'll have to cut down on something there's no uh there's no secret ingredient or golden advice here it's just uh working yeah. on something that really matters to you yeah totally i i often advise people to start with a reprioritization ex- exercise so instead of trying to like you know find a find an hour that doesn't exist in your day like look at what are the things you're already doing in your day and like where can you cut something out and replace it with side projects so maybe instead of watching 2 hours of netflix a day you're only watching 1 hour of netflix a day and you use that other hour for side projects um so have a like have a bit of a like like do an exercise in your mind of like an audit of like you know what are kind of the things that i do in my day and where could i maybe reprioritize that cut out some time from something i'm doing that's maybe not fulfilling me or not benefiting me in any way uh and use that time to replace it with side projects um that's i think a, a easier way to start than trying to like squeeze in an hour of time that doesn't exist um and you know for me at least what's happened from that point onwards is that i find that i start to enjoy my side projects and they motivate me and i get really excited and i have ideas and i can't wait to work on them and so over time i start naturally working a little bit more and more on my side projects and 
watching less and less television, for example, um, or playing less video games or whatever it is. Um, and so I think just start small. You don't have to like approach this with like, oh my gosh, I need to figure out how to like work eight hours a week on my side project. It could even just be 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Uh, it doesn't have to be a whole like block of time. Um, that's really helpful when I was starting out. Uh, and another piece of advice I would give is to be aware of your, um, uh, what's the best way to describe this? I guess like know your optimal working environment or how you like to work. So for me, I'm quite a morning person and I typically get up earlier on average than most people. And so I seize that as an opportunity to get up a bit early, work on side projects for an hour or two before starting my day job. Um, and that works well for me because I'm a morning person. Now, I'm not saying everybody needs to get up at 6 a.m. and work on side projects. You should just do what's best for you and what works well for you, right? If you're an evening person, maybe you do that at 10 p.m. I don't know. Um, but, you know, like play to your strengths. Don't put yourself in this situation where you know you're not going to have a good time. Uh, and at the end of the day, it is all about making that time, prioritizing, saying yes to the things you really care about and saying no to other things. There's no other secret formula than that, really. Yeah, perfect. And also, uh, I think a lot of people are also going to ask that if you only have one hour, and if there's a task that is going to take a lot of time, are you even going to do that? Like people, uh, like people think that, you know, this is something very new for me. And I, I don't, I just don't know how my, how many hours I'm going to need to work on that. So it happens that because of that uh, uh, roadblock, you're just going to give up on it. And it has also happened to me in the past that I know that I have to uh, do video editing. And I know that if I start video editing, it's going to take me three hours and I only have one hour. So right. I, what am I going to do? A, am I going to just, you know, skip it all together? Or one thing that you mentioned in the beginning was that you try to break your uh, task or break your work into smaller tasks. Yeah. Now, when you do that, it's obviously going to help you in building the momentum and you're going to be able to squeeze that smaller task into that smaller chunks of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all... I think both of those things go hand in hand. You have yeah. to do both in order to balance it out. Totally. Yeah. I like for, for example, if I can bring in a very, very recent example, I just recently launched a job board um, just yesterday, actually. And like, you know, you could say like, maybe I had on my to-do list, like launch a job board and like, you know, that might've taken me like a day to put together, but no, I didn't. I really broke it down into small tasks. And I actually started putting this job board together like two, three weeks ago and like realistically could have done it in a day, but I broke it down into like smaller little blocks of time, smaller tasks, like did it in between, you know, when I had 10 minutes before a meeting or something, I just quickly work on that and keep, keep working on it in those smaller time blocks. Um, and then eventually, you know, it was ready to go. And Yes, maybe I could have launched it two weeks earlier if I'd like sat down and done it in one go, um, but that wasn't that important to me. I would rather like just do smaller bits over time and not burn out myself. Um, so yeah, I think that's a good good thing to keep in mind as well as like breaking things down to make it easier to accomplish. And th there's also a beauty in that, right? When you take that uh, take that task and drag it to the completed board the kind of feeling that you get, the satisfaction that you get is also, it's also yeah. going to add up to you staying continuously motivated to work on it. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. Uh -huh. um, okay, we have about 10 minutes left and we have a few questions that I'd love to get into. Um, for folks that are still watching the stream, feel free to post your questions in the chat. If you have any that you'd like us to touch on, I'll do my best in the next 10 minutes. Um, okay, first question, Deshaun, how do you make sure that your current organization has no problems with you having a side project and possibly side income? Most companies do not allow this. Um, I'm curious, what's your experience been with this so far? Yeah, so it's a very delicate topic and I know you're, also, you're going to have a very solid answer to this. So I'm going to keep mine short. I think it's, it's just something that you have to uh, very clearly discuss. Uh, when you're when you're starting a new job just see if they are comfortable with things like this do you know if your peers are also working on side projects 
And if they are working on side projects, it's very likely that your company is fine with it. And I think most of the companies, they're fine with it unless and until it directly uh, uh, correlates or uh, there's a conflict of yeah. interest to what they're working on. So that's not really an issue. And I think also most side projects, uh, like if it's not purely done for the sake of money, uh, then then you can also, uh, you can you can just do that. So I think it's something that you have to uh, discuss or gauge for yourself in the very beginning, rather than doing something and then realizing that, you know, oh fuck, <laughs> what, yeah. what, do, what do we do now? <laughs> so it's just about the communication. And I think I'm, I'm fortunate that the company that I work for now, Graph CMS, it's very supportive of uh, people That's working great. on uh, side projects. Uh, a lot of people in our company, they work on side projects and our company sees value in it. We also create a lot of resources for the developer community. Mm. And uh, it's also one of the reasons why our product is, has been able to grow uh, quite extensively in the past few years. So it's just something that you have to uh, sort yeah. it out for yourself. Yep, I agree. That's exactly what I did when I took my job at Uber. I wrote a document of all of my side projects um, and got my manager to sign off on them to like, you know, sort of, clarify that like these are owned by me not by the company like i'm i own this and can continue working on them on my own and so it is worth a quick conversation if and when you're taking a new job uh, to just get them signed off to avoid any potential like troubles that you could have later on um but yeah there like you said there are some companies that are more encouraging of this these days so um that's also a really great sign and a great thing to see um next question is how do you stay motivated with side projects and prevent burnout um any uh, thoughts on we, that yeah i think we already touched upon this one uh the number one uh, i think the the way to avoid burnout is that when you see something is progressing right a lot of people say that uh I mean, I, I, since I follow a lot of indie hackers, I know a lot of these people, they don't get burnout. And the reason why they do not get that is because they are getting traction on the thing that they are working on. They are continuously mm. seeing that it's giving some value to other people. And then you actually feed off that. Instead of, instead of being burnout, out, you're actually being, going to be extra motivated to work on it. Yeah. And so one thing is that try to get some traction, see uh, if other people are benefiting from it. It's going to be a great motivation. Build momentum. It's, it's the number one thing that you would require to uh, work on a side project uh, continuously or for a longer period of time. If you do not see uh, things going moving forward and if you know if the task looks uh, so big that you might not even attempt it, then it's not going to help, right? Try yeah. to just break it down into smaller tasks, which you can possibly attain. And then you would also realize that over a period of time, you might have achieved so much, which you would have never imagined uh, if, if you had, you know, thought of is that, uh, thought of this like a big task of launching a job board. Yeah. Yeah, no, totally. I, I think it's important to bring up that burnout might also be a sign that like, it's time to move on or do something different or make a change right that like yeah absolutely it's 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 tempting to like keep forcing and keep pushing and keep going um but i i don't know i feel like side projects comes in in peaks and troughs and, and in different waves for me um sometimes i lose motivation and i might like put it on the back burner for a while and then i'll get super inspired and motivated and bring it back um so I think it's a whole nother topic is, is like ending side projects and like cutting, cutting them away. Um, but you know, I think burnout can be a sign that maybe it's time to move on to something different or, or change it and mix it up a little bit. Um, I think for me, how do I stay motivated is yeah. Kind of what you were touching on is just like getting that like momentum and, and getting that engagement and response is really motivating for me. Um, I mean, my audience is the most motivating thing. That's why I keep showing up. I get so many ideas from them and, and I want to keep helping them. Um, so that's motivating for me. And I think in relation to burnout, this kind of goes back again to like breaking things down into smaller tasks and like, you know, I'm trying to get better at like prioritizing personal well-being over like side projects, for example. And, you know, I'm okay with sometimes like deciding to take my dog for a walk instead of 
editing a YouTube video. Like, you know, I think you just need to be patient and kind to yourself as well so that you can show up um, when needed at your best. Yeah, absolutely. Um, cool. Okay. Another question we have is, um, I think we've kind of touched on like the rest of the questions are kind of around like managing your side projects with your full-time job, balancing self-care, um, which I feel like we've touched on a little bit. Um, do you have any other thoughts or, or comments around like when it comes to a side project and a full-time job, how do you kind of prioritize between the two of those? Um, let's say there's something urgent happening at work, but you, you know, had something going on with your side project as well. How do you kind of move forward and make sure that you're kind of balancing both appropriately? Yeah. So I think, uh, when we are balancing a side project with a full-time job for me, at least the priority would be my full-time job because that's something yeah. which is going to pay my bills. Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, obviously, and and I'm also I'm also committed to uh, working a certain number of hours, right? So I at least have to do my part there, and and obviously, yeah, there there could be many times where you have to go above and beyond that, and that's also fine, I think. Uh, but it it takes a priority, and and I also try to uh, keep my side project very organized because I've been doing it for four years now, so I've been mm. learning all of this stuff for four years. I kind of have a system in place. I know that uh, I know when I'm going to need a lot of time, when I'm not going to need a lot of time. So every two weeks I send a newsletter and to write that newsletter, it's at least going to take me about anywhere between two to three hours. So it's something that I do not do after work. It's a task that I do on the weekends because right. it's a longer task. And, and since it goes out uh, once in every two weeks, Every alternate weekend, I would be working on it. So if, uh, say, if the newsletter is supposed to go on 15th and 15th is Wednesday, I would, I would have actually written down that newsletter on a Saturday or Sunday. So I'm, I've prepared in advance. So I don't have to, you know, uh, rush into writing yeah. that newsletter just a day before. So I just try to manage things. And when you have the systems in place, I also use Notion to manage all the things related to product this stuff. And all those systems ultimately help me. And then I've never really faced a problem where I have something going on with a side project and I need to balance it out. Never happened. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you bring up systems. That's something that I've been trying to get better at as my side projects are growing. And I now also work with a couple of freelancers to help me with some of my side project work. So because of that, I need to have a few systems in place to sort of make sure that everything runs smoothly. And it is amazing what having like a systemized approach where it's like something in Notion or I personally use Taskade um, can save you so much time. And like, it doesn't necessarily automate the work, but it like structures it, right? Like, you know how to show up, you know what to do, you know what needs to get done um, and can kind of work through things a little bit more seamlessly. Yeah, exactly. And also, I think it, it also depends upon the nature of the project. Uh, yeah. What I do is sending a newsletter. So it's not going to break things. Like it's not a product that people are using. And if right. uh, things break, then they're not going to write me complaints or support requests, <laughs> right? Yeah. So obviously I, I don't have to, I mean, the, work, the kind of work that I do, I can plan in advance and I don't have to be time critical about it. Yeah. So that obviously helps. So I think it's, it's going to depend quite a lot on the nature of your side project. It's not the same. Totally. Kind of thing. Totally. That's, that's a very good perspective. Uh, great. Okay. Well, we're almost on the hour. So I want to respect people's time. I know it's a Friday and the weekend is coming up really soon. Um, Ashan, thank you so much uh, for coming on the stream, talking about side projects with me. I've had so much fun. I've learned a lot from you and I know that folks in the chat, uh, have been having a good time and learning a lot as well. So thank you so much for coming on the stream with me. Yeah, and thank you so much, Femke. I absolutely enjoyed having this conversation with you. Uh, I see that we have a lot of similarities in the kind of work that we do, and it's just yeah. nice to to be able to talk to someone who kind of uh, does similar work and uh, shares the same kind of ideas. Uh, so yeah, I've totally enjoyed it. 
Awesome. Thank you. Uh, for those of you who still tuned in, this has been recorded, so I will be publishing the recording later. If you came late, don't worry. Um, and actually, an upcoming live stream I have is with Amy Lima, who is a boot camp graduate student. Uh, and so we're going to be talking all about like her experience in a boot camp and how that's kind of helped her in her career and kickstart her sort of junior designer um, career. So I'm super excited for that future conversation. Have a wonderful weekend, Deshaun. Have a great rest of your Friday and we'll catch all of you later on. Thank you so much for joining. Yeah, you too. Bye.